How you doing, friends? On Time No See. Glad to be back. Glad you're here. Today is an interesting video for me, uh, and it, it will be for some of you. It's probably not going to be some of your cup of tea, but I'm going to do it anyway because it needs to be done. <clears throat> okay. The first thing I want to talk about is transfer shape and the effect on the performance of your saw. What are we trying to do with our transfers? <coughs> I want you to know something. Your transfers are the glue that hold the air coming in from the intake and going out to the exhaust together. That is a key point, okay? I want you to know this. And uh, now, I didn't write the book on two strokes. But there's some out there that did. And it's it's good to read and understand what two strokes are, are actually doing. And I'm going to share one with you here shortly. But first, what I want to do is show you uh, with my little whiteboard, which is directly behind this little camera, what is happening in your transfers coming out of your case. Okay? So... Just bear with me. This is going to be a long little process. I'm going to share intakes, intake timing, relationships of transfers to intake timing, and how this affects everything as far as firing a saw and being expelled as spent gases. Okay, so what we have, now I'm talking right at the second about quad loop transfers, meaning the transfers are on the outside of the cylinder. And you have four ports. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of guesswork and wondering and, and but what ifs. Okay, let's cover them one by one as much as we possibly can, okay? And uh, get my little magic pointer here. This is a poor drawing. But let's say this is a factory stock 372, okay? Cross-sectional view is what we need right now of what is actually going on. The air fuel comes out of the crankcase and enters, which you'll see there. These are, are, are fairly, fairly choked up, quite honestly. They, they really are. Um... I mean, compared to, you know, uh, the, the finished product. So, your air fuel comes up your transfers, has to turn this bend, and it comes straight out, and this is where your piston, your piston would be at the bottom dead center right here. Okay, but as that piston comes downwards, the air fuel comes out, and, and is aimed toward the intake. It's actually about one inch above the intake. It's where we're, we shoot for on most 70 cc saws. Okay. This really poor drawing on the right is how I like to see the shape. Okay. It's wider at the bottom. Okay. It has a pinch point area here. If you notice the difference between here and here, see this ramp? That's pretty much what that looks like from the factory. This is what we shape it like, okay? Now, what's going on here is by creating this pinch point right in this area, instead of this being all a pinch point, I've accelerated my air, I've let it come through. That's a tunnel ram effect. Accelerated my air right here. Give it a larger, larger area here to turn. Okay. This does not create as much pressure here as this here. That creates a lot of pressure. Okay. Before that uh, piston clears. Okay. So... This is your long side radius. This is your short side radius. This is going to become important. 
So when you study the difference between stock and what we're trying to shape here, the reason we need that, air doesn't like to bend. It wants to go straight. And it's coming in quite rapidly. It's very fast. We're making it even faster because of that pinch point. If you get too wide down here, you've got the same thing. you got blubbery air coming out. We're creating this pocket. Now, I've stressed, leave a fairly rough finish in a chainsaw. This is not for racing like GP uh, bikes. That, that's, that's a different story. This is for chainsaws. We're overcoming some problems that chainsaws have. By giving this large area to fill, now, this is straight at your upper transfer. You notice there's an angle here. Angle that up. Just do that. This will allow this air fuel to come rapidly, very rapidly out, okay? Now, things that need to be said. Anytime that you take and bend air, there is going to be a small percentage of that that comes out of suspension, the fuel, I mean, and it's going to puddle, and it'll just go in the cylinder. So this area should be very rough right in here, okay? I don't care what you do. I don't care if you dimple, you stripe it, you, whatever you need to do to get this area rough. All right? Now, on the inside of this radius, you when you cut that, you be don't leave humps and bumps if you can help it, okay? I mean, it, it just doesn't help you. You're only dealing with one cylinder. If it was a V8, you'd be in a real trouble if you did. Um, smooth, fast. You want this air to be really close right here. Now, what that air is actually going to do is it's coming at that angle. Even though it looks like this, that air has a tendency to come at that angle right there. Okay, this is what we want by raising this uh, here. You all you're doing generally is it's not a large, large amount of raise there if you have that opportunity. If you can't, don't have an angle grinder, don't worry about it. There is a gain there, though, I will tell you that. But it's important for this right here to be smooth and shiny because this coarse and rough, that air doesn't want to travel as in this area right here. And this, it doesn't want to travel close to that wall. But you want it to be able to uh, travel close to that wall on your short side runner. This is your long side runner, okay? So by making sure this is done properly, this is your biggest gain. That's worth more than this. This adds to it by creating sufficient volume, creating a pinch point, a large pocket, a smooth inside radius. Well, it's pretty obvious I can't draw with a pen. If this was a pencil, I could do it so nice, but I'm going to give a good example of it anyways. Now, what happens in the 372 with the OEM sonar, and this is, I'm going to show a couple points of why I like the highway a little better, actually a lot better. This is your piston ring. When you do a base gasket delete, what's going on is almost every time you'll notice that your piston, which this is your piston right here, you know, it goes, you know, you know the deal. Um, your piston is sticking above this part of the transfer. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> let's talk about that. Um, you'll notice this in, in other uh, aftermarket, especially the, like the, the farmer tack. It'll even get worse sometimes. But when this air, and if this isn't drawn right, it would come out more like this, you know. You know the deal. Okay, as we said, we want this air to go this way. This We want this air to come around this inside of this radius. We've just polished that. We've made that nicer. But it hits the edge of that piston, okay? And as you remove 
off of the base of your cylinder, which would be right here. You, as you remove material, if you don't want to cut your piston, you're getting into removing also from your combustion chamber. All right. Now, a quick fix, an absolute quick fix. Let me see if I can do this right on camera is to take this right off. Do a taper. That that taper is on your piston, okay? So your top of your piston was like that, and then we put a little taper on it on each side, all right? For the transfers. All right? Now let's complicate this issue by putting a pop-up on it. All right? Boy, that looks terrible, but you get the point. So, if you had this edge of this piston, let's say you used an OEM cylinder, did a base gasket delete, and got a pop-up. Not only do you have this edge here, but you have that pop-up to overcome. That takes this area, all the work you've done here, throws it out the window. It makes this area more important. And you are risking air fuel because you're bending air uh, coming out of suspension. When this angle right here of your upper transfer, instead of being straight out, is up at an angle. Instead of having the air wanting to go this way, it goes like this. This is exactly what you want. You have to get over that pop-up. Okay? Okay, now the one thing, and I'm not going to say that I don't machine these cylinders, because quite frankly, I do, more often than not. But when you take off of the base of that cylinder, this problem of the piston uh, extending up on the inside of this radius gets compounded, okay? And then when you take and machine, okay, let's just fill that in for right now, and create a smaller combustion chamber, all right? Let me show you something. From this line right here, this line right here, let's create this line right here, and this line right here, okay? You have gained massive, massive compression. You did. You made it harder to pull, but let's say you're building a cookie cutter and you don't care, and you want lots and lots of compression. Okay, because uh, uh, compression is king. It is, to a point. Work saws just doesn't work. This is more of work saws. But here's the whole deal in a nutshell. When you realize how fast that piston is actually moving in that cylinder, there is forces going with you and against you at the same time. Now, I'm going to have to just go ahead and Trying to clean this off best I can. Bear with me. I need an artist. Is one of you an artist to help me make these videos? My son offered to do this on the laptop, which is a great idea, but we have personal projects that we're doing. Okay, here's what I want to see. All right, I'm going to explain why. This area here, dome, and this area here, spark plugs right here, okay? Wherever that spark plug is, I don't even care at this point. All right. From here to here, I like to see one quarter of the total distance. This being three quarters from here to here. Okay? No more than one third. So one third of the diameter of the bore is covered from one side. Okay? This is what I like to see. And I'm going to tell you why that is. When you get your combustion chamber smaller, it's much further over here. That piston is absolutely flying trying to compress that air. 
When that comes up, that creates a turbulence that negates that intake charge swirl. So when this distance from here to where the radius starts is increased significantly, you're losing horsepower. You are. How many of you build a saw with massive compression by cutting that chamber? And it says, whoa, that's the only change I made. How come it doesn't run better than it does? This is your quench, okay? Th this air has to come up in here. When this is extended too far, that air does not want to come up here. It wants to go that direction, okay? It will blow by your ring, okay? This is why larger intake chamber is necessary to make horsepower in a chainsaw at the very top. Yeah, we can talk about dirt bikes all we want. I love dirt bikes. They work different. So, understanding this part. So, what you really want to do is you want to take this piston right here. And you want to shove that right up inside that dome. Because, and this, this, um. Uh, Let's go ahead and take this and just put a, okay, don't leave these edges. That's your pop-up. Don't leave them straight. Significant angle, a little more angle than what your combustion chamber is. Because what in what you're wanting to do, you are creating in this area right here, a whole another squish band without a ring. That air will get pushed up over that dome and trapped right here in a larger in a larger combustion chamber. When that fires, you're going to have a pleasant surprise that you have increased your compression, but you have absolutely gained your horsepower. Now, a way to take advantage of this dome protruding into that combustion chamber instead of cutting that combustion chamber making it smaller and creating problems I'm not saying don't I'm saying watch them rules they're not my rules they're just rules that exist that are absolutely rolling stone I've tried trust me I've tested them um if you will I thought I had the right piston right here. Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Now, what I've got here is a 272 52 millimeter piston. I, as you know, I run a lot of highway big bores. All right. This happens to be a 372 pop up piston. 272 pop up. Okay. Now, I use the 272 piston because I have a lathe. If you don't have a lathe, you can have a friend take care of this. All right? What you'll notice, the 272 is slightly taller from the wrist pin to here than the 372. Okay? You'll notice the skirt is also just slightly shorter. Now, it doesn't free port on the exhaust side in these cylinders that I like using. But what it does do is increase your intake timing. Okay, there's an advantage to that. We know this, all right? Here's the biggest reason. They're much lighter than a 372 piston. When I get done cutting one of these 272 pistons, that isn't just a minor pop-up. That's a big one. I try to get it so it don't sound. That ends up being quite a big one. I don't have one here I have machined already. Otherwise, I'd show you. But if you have both pistons, a 372 and a 272, you can pretty much see how much you got to take off. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's enough. It's enough. But the piston gets much lighter from doing that. But then you have a proper dome that you're going to, not, not a blunt angle on this dome, but at about like that. You want to be 
whatever your radius of your cylinder you want to be slightly more with the edge of this dome you're trying to get air fuel above this these are all the little things in these work saws that make some tech i'm telling you it works and it works wonderfully um i'm going to cover a topic that has got where it's in my book is almost taboo Short blowdown versus long blowdown. These short blowdown guys want to rub it right in your nose. Oh, I'm under my saw. It's so awesome. You are doing good saws. But you don't know why, do you? You don't. I'm going to help you. And we're going to talk about intake timing. Hopefully, I got enough time in this video. But there's things you need to know about shorter blowdown. That means... Longer transfer opening duration. Let's talk about it right now. Now, to get it right out of your system, of one argue points you're not sure why you can argue, let's go to the Holy Grail. Okay? This is the Two Stroke Tuner's Handbook by Gordon Jennings. If you don't have a copy of this, get it. I'm going to warn you. This book, book was wrote in uh, 1972 or 3. It's an old book. It's been out of print for a long time. You're going to pay $200 for this book. I'm a lucky man. I mean, I'm just old, so things like this happen. All right. Now, he is talking about GP racing. Two-stroke blacktop bikes. Uh, they were fast. They were smaller bikes, and they were fast. Okay, and he's talking about blowdown and the effects. Now, what's nice about this, this information is still very relevant and very current. However, some things you find in, uh, in this book that you really want to know is not in this book because this is the foundation all of us that's been from the ground floor of really doing performance two strokes have built upon. And we've learned even more. Okay, we've learned even more. Okay, okay, in this case, he's talking about the Yamaha 250 uh, TD3. And I'm going to just go ahead and read this, and you make of it what you will. Now, the characteristics of that is at the very top RPM, just like chainsaws, that's where all the power was. It was right on the very, very top. And it made it just about not manageable up there when when you were uh, uh, riding the bike, okay? And uh, an increase in the transfer open duration of only four to six degrees would probably broaden the TD3's effective power band. What that means, instead of being peaky by having a little longer blowdown, they made shorter blowdown, which increases the duration that them transfers are open. Softened that and made that a wider band. Okay, now that's kind of nice if you're dogging right in and you're really going to pull some chain, isn't it? To a point. Okay, so four to six degrees added to what the, the factory blowdown was. Okay, to increase the duration would probably broaden the effective power band enough to make the machine very easy to ride, reducing maximum power by ha perhaps two brake horsepower and adding about three or four brake horsepower at the lower limit of the present range. Okay, see, see where this went. Instead of being at the very top all the time, by increasing the duration of blowdown, he gained at a lower RPM. He gained three to four horsepower at the sacrifice of two horsepower up on top. Okay. The same applies to all two-stroke engines. Increases in transfer per port timed area tends to depress the power peak. Take some away at the peak but adds to the power curve at lower engine speeds. It should be understood, however, 
than excessive transfer port time area in combination with the wrong exhaust system. Chainsaws have the wrong exhaust system, believe me. Can lead to serious instability in running, yielding a major drop in peak power without adequate compensation in power range and a power curve marked by humps and hollows. It's erratic, okay? Thus, while engines exist in which exhaust slash transfer time area imbalances relative to the values presented here have not prevented quite good power outputs, such imbalances may re be regarded as extreme example anomalies. In most engines, the correct approach would be to establish time area values that fall within the range suggested here and to make adjustments within those range according to the conditions. Okay, now here's what's going on with that, okay? This is just the way it's, uh, it's read, and I'll explain just a little further. You can take a chainsaw that's capable of running peak RPMs of 14,000, and it will drop to around 9,000, or maybe a little less, Okay, you can increase. Now, there's other moves you make to make your horsepower come up and it's faster in the cut. Okay, you can decrease, in some cases, your uh, uh, blowdown, which increases the duration the transfers are open and make a little more power. When you go too far, you don't have enough time for your exhaust to uh, pressure to completely drop far enough that when them transfers open too early, they're mixing exhaust gases and intake charge together. It may be a little or maybe a lot. Most importantly, what you're doing is you are effectively moving your air fuel, some of it's mixed at the end, uh, beginning of it, out. You have an air uh, charge, a fresh air charge with fuel in it, going out with it, mixed with exhaust gases. That gets pulled back into that saw when the piston hits bottom dead center. You have lost horsepower. And now, there's some good numbers that work extremely well, depends on your uh, compression. You can increase your duration on your transfers by not giving the large lower transfers, okay? Now what that effectively is doing is slowing the air down coming up the transfers and limiting, limiting the time it takes, or, or extending the time it takes before it goes above the piston. Effectively, what you're doing is you went too far with your blowdown, your transfers were open too long, and instead of being able to build a transfer like I've just showed you, you can't. You can't do it. So you have to slow that charge down. That isn't helping you any. You aren't doing anything. You just think you are. Be honest with yourself. I've seen examples where people are trying to show Oh, look what I did with these great big ass transfers. They do horrible work. They all understand what I just showed you. Okay. <coughs> it's too bad. Uh, narrow mindedness gets you nowhere racing. Those of you that race know. And there's a bunch of you out there smarter than me when it comes to this stuff. Get it in the comments. I want to see it. Um, I have people stop here all the time. And once in a while, and it's more often than not anymore, I'm really impressed with what I hear. I really am. People are really getting this stuff. They really are. And especially if we go take one of my personal saws up back and run it, they're like, wow, I got to build that. How do you do it? So I'll just show them parts I got later on. And next thing you know, they're bringing a saw. And they like it. Look what I did. Hmm. So we know where we're at now. We know why short blow down you can get away with. Okay. Now, there are some examples of saws from the factory that run a short blowdown. One is a steel 044. Look at the size of the transfers and the windows and the piston. 
They're not that big. So, they opened the transfers earlier to get that air through. Okay? Another one is the steel 04, oh, uh, uh, 461, rather. They have front-fed transfers. They, they come in, and they go way around that saw. It takes a long time for that air to get to the upper transfers and out. They like 15 degrees, 16 degrees blowdown. I'm telling you that for a fact. They do because of the extended runner length. As you increase runner length in a two-stroke, you have to increase the duration of your transfer opening. Uh, I, I don't want to hear opening numbers per se all the time. That's a reference. It's a guide for me as I'm building. I want to know how many degrees that is open total on the intake, exhaust, and transfers. That helps me more than anything as an engine builder, okay? Now, so to get the best bang for the buck, let's get a happy medium. I'm not preaching long blowdown. I'm not preaching short blowdown. I'm saying, be honest with yourself. Get books. Just read understand what's going on, and play with it, okay? Just do that. You'll find that your fastest, best working saws, work saws, okay? We're not trying to wear them out fast. What we're trying to do is make them have a significant increase, run cooler, more power. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just the way it is, all right? I like to run as short a blowdown as I can, but still be guaranteed that I'm not mixing exhaust gases. Some of that ends up, am I running a stock muffler? Am I running a stock muffler with a tube in it? Am I running an iron horse pipe? Am I running a ram's horn? How good is my exhaust scavenging? Am I running an expansion chamber dirt bike pipe? I don't build them saws the same, guys. I do not. If I am running an expansion chamber, I'll run a fairly short blowdown straight away. This changes as you increase cc's and volume above the piston, okay? I am only talking about the Husky 372, really also the 272, if you want to know the truth. Uh, that size saw. This is what I'm talking about today. Um, I hope this information is good for you. We have to cover the intakes. We have to cover the exhaust. We've got to wrap this up in a neat little bow of what right and wrong is. And let's do it right here. Goodbye.